Okay, you can barely believe it, but this is Windows running on the OLED 120Hz 1080p from my PC on the PSVR 2. I guess we are officially playing Halo Infinite on a PSVR 2. Here we go! Hey Tiger here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. So that was my PSVR running on my PC. In cool thing, the process was completely plug and play. I didn't need any software, I didn't need any driver, nothing. I just connected this thing to the PC and started to work. <laughs> crazy. To me, it's just so crazy that I didn't try this before because I saw all these reviews from the official reviewers for Sony saying that didn't work with PC VR that I didn't even try, even if I knew that this cable was actually kind of a virtual link cable. Well, I tried and it worked. So, well, let's get into it. All right, the particular thing here is that the PSVR 2 runs on a single cable, a USB Type-C. That's still not a usual USB Type-C. That's a virtual link connection, something that was created a long time ago, around five years ago. I actually made a video about it back then uh, from a consortium between like Microsoft, Nvidia, AMD, Oculus, now Meta, HTC, all the big players in VR at the moment. The weird thing though is that it didn't actually stick. We didn't see any virtual reality headset with a virtual link connection. The only one was the Xtal AK that I actually tried on the channel. But other than that, we just had Valve. They actually announced in an alternative cable to the one to the Valve Index, but then never released it and actually canceled the project completely. And uh, yeah, we went in this timeline where to connect our virtual reality headset, we needed the display port in a USB and also a power delivery. When in theory, we had all along the possibility to actually connect it with a single USB Type-C. That's a cool thing and the caveat at the same time of the process to make the PSVR 2 working on our PC because we actually need that virtual link connection. Now, that USB Type-C was present on the 2000 series. Luckily, I still have my PC with a 2080 Ti that I'm trying to sell because I just upgraded and it was like, all right, uh, let's try a bit. And guess what? It actually worked. The sad thing though, that Nvidia actually dropped the feature from the 3000 series. So even the 4000 series doesn't actually have this connection. And the other one keep going with this is actually AMD. Or you just have to go back to it. 2000 series card, the iNAND models. It's just crazy that this consortium was actually created from all PC VR players, and then the first one to make it is actually a console player, PlayStation. But so with all this said, the process to make it work is fairly easy, actually very straightforward and plug and play, because you just have to get your USB Type-C from the PSVR, your cable, and connect it to the virtual link port on your PC. You have to turn on your headset, a little loading screen is gonna start like I'm showing now in the video, and after a bit, you're just gonna be granted with a big screen in front of you to actually display your PC. Yeah, no drivers, no programs, nothing needed. It's just really plug and play in this case. So let's put it on to see how it actually works. When you put it on, well, the screen is gonna like get stuck after two or three seconds in a position. So you can actually look around, it's something that you're not gonna be able to see because I can't actually record what I'm seeing right now, but just the screen in the computer, as you can see. So yeah, we are in a 3D UF experience where we can actually look around as we want, but we can't get any closer or further away from the screen. It's just like stuck in a position in space. If you want to change the position, it, there is a prompt. Uh, if you look on the left of the controllers, like there is on the PlayStation VR 2, but uh, what I found working because the buttons actually don't work is like to take it off and take it, put it on again, and uh, yeah, you're gonna change the position in that moment. But uh, let's go through the settings in the display settings so we can see what's going on over here. And here we are in display. And as you can see, it's recognized as an external monitor. The resolution, the maximum though is 1080p, 920 by 1080, but we still have the blacks of the OLED where everything around is completely black. And that's pretty cool. Uh, going on advanced settings, uh, we can see a bit better. The name is SIE VRH. I imagine it's Sony 
uh, interactive entertainment uh, virtual reality headset. And here you can see my graphic card, the 2080 Ti, that has a virtual link connection, as we talked about it. And we can see the characteristics of the display that is read as 8-bit display, so no HDR in this mode. The color format is RGB, and we can actually change the uh, Hertz, so the refresh rate from 60 Hertz to 120, 119 and 88, 59.94, 59.93, 50, 24, 23.98. So uh, let's try the 120 and uh, keep searching. And yeah, here we have it at a $550 1080p OLED display running 120 Hertz. Uh, well, that's a big TV. I would say more than 200 inches at three meters distance. This is big. Also, I would like to point out that, yes, the audio works and also the microphone works. As you can see from me recording here in OBS, well, this is the microphone working. Audio, same thing, directly in the headset. Unfortunately, I actually switched my computer pretty recently uh, to a new one with a 4090, so I can't actually use it there because there's no virtual link and I don't have games to try on here. The only thing I can do, and probably Sony is not gonna be very happy about it, is to play some Xbox Cloud Gaming with uh, my controller over here. And yeah, I guess we are officially playing Halo Infinite on a PSVR 2. Here we go. Kind of weird that we're living in. <laughs> So yeah, it's worth noticing though that this is of course not a full VR experience, like to have a big screen in front of you like it was possible before with the PSVR 1 and the PSVR 2 just function in the same exact way. The difference is like we have a much better display in our hands right now, it's a OLED display. Unfortunately, HDR, as we said, doesn't work, but the resolution is pretty good already to enjoy the content and maybe play some games if you don't wanna use your screen, if you have a PSVR in your hands. Now, uh, would it be like a, an actual monitor replacement? No, probably not, because we talked already about the quality of the screens of the PSVR 2, but it's not bad at all, and having a big TV in front of you, just plug and play, it's actually a very cool thing. If you don't have a 2000 series graphic cards, they're actually a company that actually makes this kind of adapter to adapt the virtual link connection to a regular PC that you can use, but I'm gonna leave the screenshot in the video right now so you're gonna be able to see it. Uh, they're very expensive, so I don't see really uh, if it's worth it right now. The cool thing related to this about a full PC VR used for the PlayStation VR 2 though, uh, is kind of getting closer and closer because yes, this thing, already works, so we just need to recognize it a bit better with software to use the cameras to actually have the tracking. The audio already works, the microphone already works. Yeah, there's no pass-through and there's no actual tracking, like just 3D of tracking. So just rotational, but it's already a great start. And Ivory, a company that actually made a driver to use the PSVR 1 on PC, is actually working actively on this thing to make it work as a full VR headset. You can check them out on Steam already, and something that works without any problem. It's also crazy how many people actually use the PSVR VR one to play PC VR games. But yeah, that was all guys. I think it was a very cool thing to try and I wanted to share it with you because I got very, very excited with that just popped up, the screen just popped up on my face. If it's something that you wanna use it for, if you have the hardware to do it, uh, well, it might be enjoyable. There are many people actually using the PSVR to play PS5 games in a cinema mode, and this is cinema mode directly for your PC. No programs, no drivers, nothing needed. It's just a really plug and play situation if you have, of course, the hardware to plug it in. But yeah, what do you think about that? You're excited for PSVR 2 actually working on PC in the future in a full VR mode, or are you happy already with this uh, new display mode uh, that we just discovered? Let me know in the comment below. And as always, guys, if you like the video, like, if you didn't like the video, just like, subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you really love the channel, join the button on there. And further, also the Patreon, thanks for the Patreon, so join the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.